So I'm just sharing my screen now. Hopefully you can all see that. Could somebody just give me a thumbs up or something? Still coming through for me. I see a black box um, still. So does everybody else see it? Because I just see a black box. Yeah, same here. I don't think we can see it, at least not yet, George. What are you showing us? Hello? Hello? Can you hear us? Yeah, Hello? sorry, I don't know what happened there. It's a bit of a technical glitch. Okay, we can't see your screen. Um, I still can't see it, and I don't think other people can either. Maybe unshare and try resharing it. How about that now? Not, not for me. Don't see that. I see a black, uh, tall, thin thing. What are you trying to share? My PowerPoint. Um, Maybe try to share your whole screen rather than the, the application. There we go. No, I see that. That's fine. Okie dokie, right. So from beginning. Sorry, I'm clicking to share my PowerPoint and it's not coming. This is a problem when you have so many screens, isn't it? When you get greedy. <laughs> right, here we go. So okay. can anyone see that now? Or now can you see my the wrong we see now we see what you're there we, there we go there we go now we see it <laughs> finally <laughs> um so today i will be introducing computer vision um and then giving an example of a model um which is used for computer vision um when i say model it was also kind of a particular architecture that has been developed for identifying objects within an image so when we talk about computer vision, um, we're talking about the ability for an application to understand an image or, an, or a video. Um, now already there's so many different applications that have already been used for many years really with facial recognition on the iPhone, um, recently in um, airports where you have a facial scanner and it's texturized. So it's quite you know, it is used and it is implemented um, and obviously for it to be implemented to unlock your phone and to get you through border security, it's pretty accurate and pretty good. So here um, we've got artificial intelligence. Now machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence and deep learning is a subset of that and computer vision fits in just around about here. Um, I just thought if I introduce this, it'd give you a little bit of an overview. Um, when we're talking about deep learning, we're talking about neural networks. Um, and when we're talking about machine learning, we're talking about anything from a predictor model, um, a computer mod, a computer vision model, um, a natural language and processing model. So it's quite a big array of, of things. So hopefully that kind of narrows it down and pinpoints what we're looking at today. So when we talk about computer vision, um, we're talking about training a machine to detect and classify an object. Now, there's many different instances of computer vision, and this is a nice little diagram that kind of summarizes them all. So you've got this image here, which is just a general classification to say, right, that image contains a cat. Then you've got this image here, which is classifying that this image contains a cat, but it's also saying where that object is within the image. And then you've got overall object detection where you're detecting multiple images, uh, multiple objects, sorry, at multiple classes. So you've got a cat, a dog and a duck. So you've got three different objects, which is called three different classes in um, computer vision compared to this image here, which is detecting one class. Um, and then just to remove any confusion, here we've got two images, two cats detected, but that still only classes as one class. Then here, which I've never really, I've never done anything on here. Um, 
But image, in, they've called it instance segmentation, but it is referred to as image segmentation. And you can see that each part of the object is fully clearly outlined compared to here, where you've got a bounding box, which has identified the image. Um, so this one here is quite broad. And then obviously as you go along the images, they get more com complex. Um, is there anything that I need to add here? No. Okay, so here, just to kind of make some emphasis on this point, is here we've got an image of an elephant. We can clearly see that it's an image of an elephant because elephant, we're humans, um, an African elephant. And here I've put two bounding boxes around the elephant. But actually all we've done here is we have detected an object within an image. Whereas now we have classified the object in the image as an elephant. Um, so there's two parts that detect and classify. Um, so I just wanted to make that a little bit clearer. Now, when we look at computer vision, um, there's many ways, many models that you can use to detect and classify objects within an image. Um, but the one particular method that we're looking at, um, the particular architect that we're looking at is the YOLO V5. Now, the definition of YOLO um, is you only you look only once. Um, so what we're saying is, or you only look once. I can't believe I've typed it wrong. Anyway, <laughs> you only look once is the definition of the YOLO V5. Um, and that's just basically kind of, I reckon it's just a bit of a reference of how quick um, this kind of method is. The purpose of it is object detection and classification. Um, and the most recent version um, unofficially is version five. Um, now I say unofficially, and that's because Joseph Redman, who initially created YOLO, um, he didn't actually create this version. Um, he created YOLO versions one, two and three. Um, but this YOLO version was created by another human, but I can't remember the name, sorry. Um, the first model was released in 2016 by Joseph Redman, um, and he actually received the OpenCV award um, for this. So it was pretty, pretty good what he what he achieved. And I think he was only really young as well. So quite an inspirational person, I imagine. Um, then he went on to publish YOLO version two and YOLO version three in 2017 and 2018. So why YOLO? Um, and it's in, in comparison now, the comparisons are um, regional based CNN, which is regional convolutional neural network. Um, so these are just different types of these architectures. Now, the reason that YOLO kind of is quite popular is because it can achieve good accuracies at speed. Now, obviously, it has, as, as these YOLO versions have gone on, these speeds have become quicker and the accuracies have become better. Whereas I think there was a point in time where faster RCNN's models were more accurate, but they were slower, whereas now it seems, especially with this version, that speed and accuracy, YOLO V5 is competing with these other models, if not overcoming them. Um, now, the reason it can achieve these good accuracies at a really quick pace is because it has a simple architect, and I think it's got 24 convolutional neural networks. Um, now, I'm not quite sure what it is in comparison to fast RCNN, but I, I know it's less. <laughs> Um, is trained to do classification and bounding box regression at the same time. And that's what makes YOLO V5 and YOLO all in all um, quite up there. So, for example, when you look at a video, instead of it, it, it can continually, if you're in, a, if you're, for example, a driverless car application, it can continually identify and classify people, lampposts as the car's moving, which makes it really good for like videos and things like that. And I've just popped these um, links down at the bottom here in case anybody wanted to dive deeper. We are going to be looking at link number one um, at the end of this PowerPoint presentation. So how does it work, YOLO V5? Can I, can I, just, uh, can I just say, add a few things to it. That's a really good introduction to YOLO. Um, we have to be careful in here of throwing around things like um, our RCNN and stuff like that that people may not have heard of before. But the thing that I wanted to say about um, about Joseph Redman and his um, 
his invention YOLO, his algorithm YOLO, is that um, you, everything that George just said is correct. That uh, you know, it's kind of a kind of a big deal. The reason it's a big deal is that it's fast, and it was faster in doing that task of um, identifying and localizing objects in pictures and video. By fast, I mean it was really, really fast. What before would take um, a big research server, you know, minutes to do, um, YOLO. Uh, just took uh, less than a second to do. So it was a, it was a massive increase in speed. Uh, the other thing I want to say about Joe Redman is that um, George mentioned that he was quite young when he did this. But um, what you didn't mention, George, is that um, he didn't, he released YOLO about a year or two into his PhD. <laughs> he's just a PhD. <laughs> he's he's just a PhD to... student, like uh, like most of the guys in here. And um, he was he was working with quite a well-known computer vision uh, researcher, but but solving applied problems. And um, overnight, uh, you can imagine if something like this happened to yourself that you um, this was before he even released a, a peer reviewed paper on this this YOLO version one architecture. Um, he gave a talk about it at a meeting and it, it went essentially went viral and not only did it go viral amongst academics um <clears throat> people all over the world began paying attention to it and um and started using it and his uh, his original yolo paper now has been cited um uh, over ten thousand times and uh, he was invited to do a ted talk this is like in his first or second year of his phd based on sort of the first you know, first chapter of his thesis that he flopped out to the world and it just went crazy. And he, and he did build on that and released a couple more versions. And now there are some even newer ones. I just wanted to say uh, to put that into context because <laughs> it's so amazing. <clears throat> Thank you, Ed. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty inspirational. <laughs> um, so YOLO V5, how does it work? So it divides images into a grid system um, and then each cell in that grid is responsible for detecting objects within within that kind of image. Um, now, why YOLO v5 has been pretty, pretty amazing um, is because it actually uses PyTorch framework um, compared to previous YOLO developments which use Darknet. Now, PyTorch is an open source library for Python, so it's super easy to implement and super easy to use in comparison to well, I say super easy. Um, it's still quite hard to, to use if you're like a beginner. Um, but in comparison to setting up Darknet and everything, it is reasonably a lot easier. Now, here we've got some kind of images of how the YOLO V5 works. So you can see this image here is the grid that is placed onto an image. Um, and it, it's basically divided the image into a set number of, of grids that have all got the same size. Um, and then the next part, it it kind of predicts the probability of that object kind of, uh, oh, sorry, Matt's little message there. Um, it, it kind of predicts the prob probability of that object location within the image. Um, so you can see there's a lot of bounding boxes here um, and you can see where it's darker, that's got a higher probability of that object being present at that position in that image. Um, and then here, it's then finally removed all of these other bounding boxes and it's focused on the dog, the bicycle and the car. Now, this process lowers the computation um, for detection and recognition. Um, however, you get a lot of these, well, you've got a lot of predictions um, and they're, they're highly duplicated. So the way YOLO removes all of these duplicated predictions is it uses non-maximal suppression. Um, and what it does is it just suppresses all the bounding box that have a really low probability. Um, and it does that by looking at the pro probability scores within each decision and then taking the lot, just taking the biggest probability basically. Um, and then it suppresses the bounding boxes that have the largest IOU. Now the IOU is the intersection over union. 
um, which is kind of one that we can go into more detail next time, but it's basically like the area of difference between an, the main prediction and then the one prediction that's a little bit kind of moved over, over the bounding box. Um, and then it's just continually repeated until all the bounding boxes are obtained, which is obviously shown in this image here. Now, the next part of the, that's, that's my end, end of my presentation, quite simple and sweet. Um, now, the next part is to actually have a look at a model. Um, now, I've chosen to. Oh, oh, it's going up over here. Here we go. So I've chosen to show you this model in Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab, which is similar to Google Colab, but I think it's better and prefer it. So that's what I've chosen to show you guys um, in. Now up here is the link to the YOLO V5 um, model, which is in the PowerPoint presentation. If any of you guys want to want to see it, I'll, I'll pop it in the chat now in case any of you fancy um, fancy a look. So as you can see, there's a lot of information here. Now, the first thing that we've done is we have cloned this uh, GitHub repository into SageMaker Studio Lab. Um, now, the version that I have cloned is the version that Ed Harris um, forked off into his own GitHub, and then we've worked from that. Um, now, the beauty of doing that is you always stick into that one version here, whereas here, I mean, you can see three days ago, two days ago, you know, there's always going to be continuous updates and continuous versions. So I'm in my SageMaker Studio Lab. Now, if you guys want to get an account, you can't really follow along because it takes days for your account authorization to come through. Um, but you just kind of go on SageMaker Studio Lab, start account, say you're a student, wait a few days and it'll come in and, and, and you'll be able to log on. The beauty of this is when when I open this up now, you'll see everything I've previously been working on and it just saves it, which is just nice and neat, really, compared to Google Colab that doesn't do that. Um, but yeah, you do definitely need a GPU to run this to run this model. Hopefully it will open soon. <laughs> There we go. So now you open your project. So it started the GPU and it just opens a Jupyter Lab kind of interface, which is nice and neat and familiar. So here in my documents, um, these are everything I've been kind of working on. Now I've cloned the, I've created an original folder. Um, now in here, I have got these. I'll delete these and we'll start from the beginning. I've cloned in this YOLO V5 custom training Python notebook, um, and this is the most important one. So when you are training your YOLO model, initially that model has already been trained on a set of images. Now the set of images that this model's already been trained on is the COCO 128 data set. So we're going to click into this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is install everything and clone our GitHub. So I'm actually going to delete this file because technically it doesn't exist yet because um, I've not cloned it in. So here I've just got, we'll, we'll go on to some more of these details here, but first we're just going to simply clone in the YOLO v5 model from GitHub. Now again, I'm using the Ed, Ed's version that he cloned, not the original from GitHub Ultratronics YOLO v5 page. So I'm just going to hash out this, comment out that. Now, this file um, that they've created has got a requirements.txt file. Um, now, I think it's important that everyone kind of gets in the habit of using these because they are pretty good. It just kind of sets the requirements that you need, especially with Python with version controls. It brings in all the correct versions and everything. Um, that, that are needed to, to run the whole the whole script. So I'm going to run this. I'm importing the torch library because it's a PyTorch, the OS, um, and then I've asked it to print when this setup is complete. So yeah, it's, it's printing and it's telling me that we're using a Tesla 
T4 GPU, so that's handy. Now the next part is I'm going to check what my present working directory is. So I've done that using a percentage PWD. Now you have to use percentages in here. I don't know why we have to use percentages before the general, I think it's Linux command, um, but you have to, otherwise it doesn't work. Now we can see that we're in my main folder, which is home, and then we're in Studio Lab user, which is normal, it always comes up like that. And then we're in the folder original, which is where I wanna be. Now notice here, I've got this YOLO v5, and this was installed a minute ago, so it was cloned from Ed's GitHub a minute ago, and that's in there ready to go. Then I need to be, for this, for this model to work, I need to actually be in the YOLO v5 folder. Now in the YOLO v5 folder, we have got this train.py folder, uh, Python. I'm going to open this up. Now, you don't have to mess with this. This is the beauty of it. They've already done it all for you. Um, and as you can see, let's see how many lines of code there is here. So 636 lines of code. And it's basically all the, all the information that you need to train the model. Now, what you're doing here is you're just telling Python to go into the train.py, run it on the image size, so these Coco 128 images are 416 by 416. You're inputting the batch, which standard is 16. You're specifying the number of epochs, which is epochs is basically like a time measurement for training a model. Um, and then you're saying that you're going into data. And then here is another really important part. Now, another difference between the, the YOLO v5 and other YOLO versions is we're working from a YAML file, a .yaml file, um, which is which is a new kind of thing, which, but it is really good and we'll, we'll show you that next. So here I'm saying, I'm saying to my, um, I'm, saying he, I'm saying here that we need to come out of original using the dot 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 forward slash, but obviously I don't actually need to come out of original because I'm already in original, do you see, do you see what I mean? You only need to come out of original if you are in the YOLO v5, but I commented out up here, change directory to YOLO v5. So that means I'm not physically in that folder and I'm just in the originals folder. So what I can actually do here is I can remove this here. And what that what I'm telling my file to do is I'm telling it to go into, if I, so if I go into original, I'm telling it to go into my YOLO dash files, which here it is. And I'm telling it to look at the coco128.yaml. So if I look in the 128.yaml, you can see here um, that we've specified the path, which is the data set root directory. We've specified the location of the train images of the coco128 data set. We've specified the validation image location. And then we've created, a, well, there's a test one. Um, so if we wanted to put test images in there, we can. Then here we've specified the number of classes. So note here we've got 80 classes. Um, now, if we were doing that first example that I showed you of a cat, it would just be a cat and that would be one class. Um, but you still have to specify it within this YAML. Uh, so we'll cross off that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we've got the dash weights, which these are all specified within these YOLO, YOLO v5 folder. And then we've also got the YOLO v5s. Can you see that s.pt? Now, basically what that means is there's different types of YOLO v5 models. You've got YOLO v5n, which is nano, YOLO v5s, which is small, and then YOLO v5m, which is medium, and, and so on. So I'm going to run this. Fingers crossed it works. So it's telling me that Python can't open home forward slash studio lab forward slash original slash train dot py. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do change my directory. I'm going to put me back into YOLO v5. See, I haven't put the percentage, so that's why it's not worked. So now I'm in the YOLO v5 folder. Then I'm going to put this back here, which was dot, 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 forward slash, which means I'm coming out of the YOLO v5 folder into 
the next folder. And that's because my train.py folder wasn't in the original folder. It was in the YOLO v5 folder, but I'd only told it that it was in the original folder. So now I'm going to rerun that. Let's see what happens. So, so far, so good. Here we go. So here it's telling us information about the architecture of the model. So here we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this is the number of layers. So like I mentioned previously for YOLO v v5, it's 24 layers. Um, and then we've got what optimizer has been used, the location of the train and the VAL, any anchors that have been used and then where they're going to save the results to. So they're going to save the results to the folder runs forward slash train forward slash exp. Now it's saying that we're commencing the training for 30 epochs. Um, now, if you if the terminology epochs kind of confuses you, sometimes I just think about it as like 30 seconds, but never actually say that. Just say 30 epochs. It's just a measurement of time within within training a model. So here all the epochs are coming down and we've been told all these different kind of measurements. So object, class, labels, image size. And then below that, we've got class all images, 128 labels, 929. So that's telling us that within those 128 images, we've got 929 labels. Then we've been told the precision, which is 0.33. Now the precision is a number between zero and one. The same with the recall, the same with map 0.5 and the same with map general. Now these map 0.5 and map, these are just measurements of accuracy. So for example, at epoch zero, um, we've got a 43% accuracy at map 0.5 and 0.19% accuracy at, at map. Then once it's trained the model, so it just keeps repeating this all the way through until we get to epoch 29. And then at the bottom um, of, of this, so these are all the different classes, tells us a summary of the model, so 213 layers, the number of parameters, and then it just kind of summarizes each precision recall and map for each class. So that all is obviously all the classes, then how much for person, bicycle, car, then at the bottom, usually there's a summary to like the best one. Uh, it's just given us the best one for all here. So the best map that we got was 0.75, so 75% and 50% and 0.7 precision and 0.716 recall for all classes. So now if we go to the, um, if we go up to the top, and we see where the results were saved. So runs train exp. Now the runs folder is in this YOLO v5 folder. So all this stuff gets saved to the YOLO v5. And something that's like most important about kind of implementing this model is understanding the file structure. Um, and the best way to kind of do that is just to have a bit of a play yourself. But here, if we open the runs folder, I've got train. Then I've got this folder exp. Now these are the results from training the model on the train data set. So I click EXP, then I've got my weights. So this is the best best weights. Um, so I can't open that because of the format of the file. But further down, we've got all these different kind of images. So train batch. So we can see that it's not really that, that great. And you can see all the different kind of, it's not re really very high accuracy. There's some zeros and it's not really very clear either. Um, but it's had a go, it's had a go. Um, now the one we're kind of interested in for which we can analyze ourselves is this results.csv file and this basically just imports what we just saw on the screen into a nice tidy data format. Um, go on the results PNG. Then here we've got some nice graphs so the train over box loss at each epoch so the the, the x-axis is representing the epoch and we've got all sorts of metrics that come out from these from these models. So now um, I'm going to go back to back to our model. And what I want to do is I want to train. I want to test 
the model that we've just trained on a set of images and I want to see how accurate uh, it is going to uh, identify in it. So here um, we've got print working directory again. And we're in YOLO v5. Then we're doing Python and note here we've gone from the train.py to the detect.py file. So we've changed files. Then we're saying, right, go to the runs train exp forward slash weights forward slash best. So we're saying use that best.pt, so the one I tried to open, um, and use that with the detect.py with the images that we've put in the coco 128 forward slash test. OK, now here I put a bit of a comment saying make sure exp folder exists. And that's because you can get very carried away. Keep running the model, keep running the model. Well, every time you run the model, you get a different exp. So here I was on exp folder six, so I'd run the model six times, whereas I've refreshed this, I've cleaned all my folders out, and now from looking up here, I know I've only got the model exp, um, in folder exp. So I need to update that and, and just write exp. Then I'm going to show you this dot 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 forward slash coco128 test folder. So we're going to go into original, we're going to go into our Coco128 folder. Now, this Coco128 folder has been cloned from GitHub. I've got my images, labels, and test. So we're interested in this test folder. So, Cecilia, a test one, a test two, and a test three image. Okay. Now we can super easy add more images in here. So if I go onto plus, oh no, upload, sorry, and I go into my photographs. And I've got one of a cow. And I want this to be a dot JPEG. I'll go for, I'll, I'll try it. Might not work though. Now I'm going to have to convert it. So I'll delete that. Delete. So I'm going to go back into my pictures. I'm just going to convert that to a, to a JPEG quickly. Rename. Oh, it worked. OK, so I'm going to upload in here another image that I want to test from. So cow.jpg. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five images. So this test three is a cat, test two is an elephant, test one is a bear, Cecilia, and a cow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this model on all of these images and see how well it can detect what's in that image. So I'm going to run it. So it's doing something. So here we go. It's saying that image one is a bird. It's saying image two is a cow and two sheep. It's saying image three is a bear, image four is an elephant, and image five is a cat and a bed. Um, so now if we go into runs forward slash detect, so this is in the YOLO v5 folder. Now note that here we're looking in the detect folder because we use the detect.py. Now that file structure has already been set up for that for that result from that model to be saved into that folder. So we're going to detect exp. Now, if I click on these images, you can see that the bounding boxes have already been placed. So 55% sure it's a cow. Here, they're 28% sure it's a bird. Here, 94% sure it's a bear. 0.9 sure it's an elephant and 0.68 sure it's a it's a cat so these test one test two test three especially the the elephant and the bear really high accuracy compared to say it's only been trained on really not that many images but lots of different classes so we've tested that now the next move is for us to take this model that we've trained on a data set created by somebody else that's got lots of different classes with lots of different labels and apply it to our own data set. So the problem that we had with this was that we were doing it on potato stems and we wanted to identify potato stems within a potato crop. Um, now, potato stems aren't as distinct, like distinguishable 
in a nice field as a bear is or as a cat is or as an elephant is so it's a lot harder to identify um, so therefore for bios using a pre-trained model which is now what this is because it's been pre-trained then we're adding a new layer and we want to apply this to our own data set so to do that what i did was we copied this uh, yolo v5 custom training we then created a new folder of our images so i'm just going to go back and show you the coco 128 images and labels so just the file structure you've got your images but in this case we've got coco 128 we've got images labels test now within the images you've got your train and there's all your jpegs then here we have got our labels and there's all your .txt files that associate with that image so for every image you've got a single text file and these images and text files are in separate folders one called images and one called labels so then your your kind of model that you've trained will always be able to look in those exact places for those exact things so if we i'm just going to remove these but tidy up tidy up a bit so now um, I'll show you the images that we've uploaded. So we've got two different ones that we tried it on. We tried it on stems-joe and another one which is called 2021-07-06-session09. Now we've got each, for each of these, we've got a different Python notebook. Um, so the one I'm going to do today is session nine that we called it. And that just basically was as coding that day that we went out and took images of potatoes and labelled them as session number nine. Now for this to work, I need to make sure I've got a YAML folder that's kind of saying that this data set here, 2021 for dash 07-06-9 dash exists. And if it exists, where is it? So you'll see that when I uploaded this, we replicated the exact file structure as what was in the Coco 128. So I've got my images, I've got train and I've got labels and I've got train. Now we wanted to add a, a validate and a test set to this as well, um, which you can do and, and we've done that. As long as you specify that in your YAML that it exists, then it's fine. So, uh, but we've still copied that images label structure. Now note also when we go into here, if I show you the images, I've got three folders, train, test, val. But if I go into my labels folder, I've only got train and val. And that's because obviously I don't want to tell it where I already know the labels are for that test, because then I won't be testing how good my model is. So now we're going to go into our YOLO file. So we're going to go into this. I just named it all the same. Um, so it all linked for the same thing. And you can see that here we're coming out of the main folder and we're going into that folder, which is the root for that directory. Then we're telling it where the train images are. Now I'm just going to get this Coco 128 one up now. So you can see here that they've put their folder structure as Coco 128 and their images forward slash train 2017. Ours is images forward slash train, not train 20, train 17, but obviously if we called it train 17, that's what it would be. Um, and then the same for the train and the same for the test. Then also note here, number of classes one, because we're only detecting the number of stems and then the names, which is stems class names. So, you know, we've gone from 80 classes to one classes and our specific problem. So now we're going to go back into our session. Well, we haven't been in this yet, but we're going to go into the session 09 YOLO file. Now here we are going to see our current working directory that we're already in. So we're in our folder structure original, which is fine. Now here I've got git clone utrolix. Now we don't need that because we're no longer, we've already cloned our YOLO v5. Now we are then taking that information and we're applying it to a model that we've already got. So I'm still going to run the rest of it just so it's all kind of there. So you can see that we're in, we've now changed the directory and we're now in YOLO v5. So we're now in this folder here. So to train our model, I've simply changed. So if we look at this for uh, exclamation mark Python line train dot py, all I've changed is the image sizes. And that's because these image sizes are bigger than the Coco 128. 
I've added this dash dash rect and that's because we're telling it that these are actually rectangular images, not square. Then I've changed it from YOLO dash files forward slash COCO 128 to 2021 dash 07 session 09 YAML. So I've just changed over the YAML file. So we're just simply taking the exact same Python notebook and changing where it's looking. We're telling it to look somewhere else for that data. So if we run this, fingers cross it all runs. Bear with it a minute. So again, 24 networks. Now it's running, so that's good. It's saving our results to runs forward slash train forward slash exp. Could I just make a few remarks while this runs? <clears throat> one, one thing is um, that uh, I think you moved through quite quickly, but it's an important point to make is that um, when you when you construct a model like this, yellow provides the framework, but the nice thing that George is demonstrating here is that you can generalize it to any problem whatsoever, <clears throat> and you define what the problem is by um, editing that that file that defines the classes <clears throat> and the the first model that George ran for us was um, called the Coco model <clears throat> and it what it is is a set of training images that are those exact 80 classes and she showed us the uh, the tests and um, the elephant and the cat and so forth everything but the um, the Cthulhu picture was in the training data set, but that picture of Cthulhu had wings and it, um, you know, identified it as a bird with low probability. So you, you're constrained by the training data set that is your definition. And uh, the other thing that I think I wanted to emphasize here is uh, what's happening under the bonnet a little bit is that <clears throat> when the uh, model scans over example pictures that you define uh, uh, to train the model. It's picking out um, little features like um, a margin uh, or the shape of a wing or um, very small bits of information. Of course, that that's defined in the model, but a, a fundamental difference of this kind of model from normal old statistics is that um, with a statistical model, we're we're telling uh, the the system that we expect a Gaussian distribution of our dependent variable. So we create the rules and then we put our data through the rules. But a, a fundamental difference between that and, and this kind of model is that we don't know the rules. And we use this model to to define the rules for us. And uh, And as a matter of fact, those layers that George um, pointed to, they're called hidden layers. And uh, within those hidden layers are the rules that um, that the algorithm picks out for us. And the rules also are hidden. We, we never need to know them. All we need to know is uh, that we've put in enough cat pictures and enough horse pictures so that when we we challenge the model with a with a novel picture we've never put through before that that um, that the rules exist in order to allow us to classify it. This this is a very hard test because picking out a, a potato stem, a stem has leaves and stems, but all the rest of the potato plant also has leaves and stems. <laughs> so this is actually a really hard problem. So uh, amaze us now, George, <laughs> with, with the results here. No, yeah, that's fine. I just wanted to add when you said about the feature, it's um, if I go back just to just to this kind of image here. So when we're talking about features, we're talking about like the edge of the image where the pixels change between this green and this brown um, and then the edge of detection around it. These are all kind of clusters like textures and features of that image which allow it to differentiate between different pixels. Um, but but yeah, I just wanted to add, add that part. Thank you, Ed. 
Um, so here, if we go at runs train forward slash exp, it's given us the, the map 0.5, the map 0.0844. Um, and if I go into the YOLO V files and I go into the runs, into the train, exp2 now, because this is where we have um, we have looked, we can find the um, each row represents an epoch and all the results from that epoch run. And then if I go into detect, I've not got a folder there yet because we haven't run the detect.py folder as of yet. So if we go further down here, um, and I'm just going to add a new row here and just see where I am. So PWD, present working directory. So I'm, I'm in the LOV5, which is fine. Um, I want to do detect.py. Now runs forward slash train forward slash exp. Now it's not going to be exp because that would be my Coco 128 results. It's going to be exp2, which would be my results based on this data set. Again, we've got the image size, the rectangle, um, the data dots dataset.location, so our dataset.location is spell it right, is dot, dot, open and it is 2021-07-06-9 dash Right, so if I run this now, it's going to hopefully test what we trained earlier onto images that this model has never seen before. So let's see how it goes. Usage detector, dash, or error unrecognized argument, dash rect. Runs train exp. Runs train exp, wait, forward slash bet, image, twenty dash, dash rect. Bear with, I'm just wondering if the, the rect, these are in the wrong place. It should actually be here. Right. Right, runs image. That. Yes. Right, so runs exp. <clears throat> I don't know what's happening there. Maybe just take out the dash dash rect and see what happens. <laughs> It's an odd one, isn't it? I'm going to put I, it. I can't remember the syntax for testing. I would have to look at my, my earlier script, but just take it out the dash dash rect. Crazy. I don't know. It's still not finding the files, is it? Um, dash dash source. I'm going to put dash dash rect. Uh, dash dash image. One, two, eight, zero, back here. I think there's a different error that time, George. It, it yeah. can't find the images. Yeah, yeah. We just double check that that image, that uh, folder does exist up there. <clears throat> yeah, so images. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, there, there it's images tat, test, not test images. Good boy, Ara. Boom. OK, so these results have been put in runs forward slash detects.exp. So if we go into YOLO v5, we're going into runs, detect, exp4, then the fingers crossed we've detected some stems. Oh, that's a mess. Mm -hmm. mm. So it's not very accurate at all. But I, you know how we had that problem with this ed, and you got we got 0 0.9, and then I kept getting that rubbish value. I recloned it from the original. That's what this version is last last week, and it was just 
I couldn't identify what was actually making it not get that initial accuracy. Yeah, what anyway. is what is happening there on that picture is that um, it's picking up uh, multiple stems on the same one, and there there are multiple ways to tune it. <clears throat> so we would have to work to tune the model, but essentially the model is working. And this one, as you said earlier, you only trained it for um, a small number of epochs and and also a relatively small number of examples in the first place. So that's a, probably worth saying it's a limitation of this kind of tool is, is that it's hungry for data. You need a, a relatively large data set. But that's like, just to add there, that's the beauty of using the GitHub because I mean, before, when I first started using this, I was uploading all these individual files on here, creating the folder, control all, input them all. Whereas once you've uploaded them all onto the GitHub using GitHub Desktop, all you've then got to do is clone your GitHub. Um, so it is a good a good way around, but obviously you can only load one gigabyte in your GitHub, which is another kind of constraint. Maybe you could just uh, close it up here, um, recap what we've done, and um, you might also um, say why in the world you would like a computer to count how many potato stems there are. <laughs> okay, okay. So, um, obviously, computer vision. There's loads of different ways that you can do it. We've focused on the Yolo V5. Um, file structure is super important. The particular imp implementation that we want it to use is to identify potato stems. The reason that we'd like it to identify potato stems is because there is a a, a relationship between potato stems, the number of them, and the number of tubers, so yield. Um, if we can identify the, the, the relationship between these and understand how many stems there is, we can then alter our output so we've got a more sustainable potato production, um, which is the, the main thing. So yeah, if anyone's got any questions, feel free. Imagine there are some blown minds in the audience because that is uh, from beginning to end a pretty advanced topic, but um, <clears throat> it has been super fun to, uh, to, to play with the yellow models. Um, you didn't, I, I thought you might give us an example of um, Following on, how is this relevant? Maybe you could just say a few remarks, George, about how it follows on from your MRP. So when we did um, my MRP, we looked at how accurate individuals were at producing that, like labeling data. Um, so putting a bounding box on an individual stem. Now, obviously, in a large scale environment, you want to get lots of data, lots of labels. Um, but we were kind of investigating if actually having all of these labels, how accurate are these labels between different observers and different people labeling um, and also looking at different methods so how accurate are people when they label on a computer or how accurate are people when they're labeling out in the field 